This is by far the longest project that I've ever made for this channel, but only because every idea that I had was bad. Most projects that I make for this channel take me about two weeks to complete. That's why my videos are usually about two weeks apart. And by the way, go ahead and subscribe to see those videos every two weeks. This project, however, took me seven months to complete. That's like literally forever. The plan was to take some pictures of my kids, encase them in resin, and slap these cork bottoms on there to make some little gift coasters I could give out for Mother's Day. Super cool. But I missed Mother's Day, so then it was, well, there's a couple of birthdays coming up. I could probably go for one of those. Okay, now Father's Day's coming up. That'd certainly make a great gift there. Okay, how about I finish them up in time for Hanukkah? I got a chance on that one, but I think I'm going to miss it. They're probably going to be Christmas gifts. And you might be wondering, how? How on earth does this take that long? Well, let me answer your question with a question. Have you ever tried to polish resin to a high-gloss, glassy finish? Because I have, and I hate it. Let's go back to the beginning. Go back to the beginning. What have we learned? I started off by trying to make my own molds out of a flexible filament. And technically, it came out looking good. Problem is, it's not waterproof, so they will not work as molds. So I ended up having to order some. And the downside to ordering molds is they're not the exact size or stiffness that I need for this project, which will probably contribute to some of my problems later on in this project. Ominous. Next, I tried using a 3D printed stencil ring and an X-Acto knife to cut perfect circles out of these rectangular photos. And it went about as well as you might imagine, which is to say, very, very poorly. Thankfully, my parents have a brother scan and cut that I was able to use in the middle of the night to cut perfect circles, but I shouldn't have had to rely on a robot. With the right tools and materials, I probably could have done this with a better stencil. Thing is, at this point, I was still convinced that this was a weekend project and I didn't have the time. Yeah, I used to be dumb. That was all in April. Finally in May, it was time to pour some resin. Now I only have six molds and barely enough room for them as is, so I ended up having to do this in three batches. I started off by pouring some black resin down on the bottom as a base layer, waited for that to fully cure and harden, and then I stuck down those photos with a little bit of glue stick before dumping some clear resin on top of it. Now with how long the cure time is and how many batches I needed to run, this ended up taking me about two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks? These things demolded like a dream, which is no surprise because they're a soft silicone mold and that's what they're supposed to do. But there was a problem. It was a sharp ridge or rim around the top edge of every single coaster. It's what's called a concave meniscus. And basically this forms when the attraction between the resin and the mold is strong enough to overcome the surface tension of the resin. It kind of makes it look like that resin is trying to climb up out of the mold. Now, this concave meniscus is the worst thing that's ever happened to me on this YouTube channel. Oh, it's bad. I wanted to remove this sharp edge from the top without getting destructive. I want to maintain that perfect glossy surface finish that I had, but just get rid of the unwanted ridge on the edge. So I started with a deburring tool, which did not work well at all. I tried an X-Acto knife, which also did not work well. Ooh, I thought, what if I just pour some more resin on top? Will it maybe like level out and then I won't have to do anything? No, no, it did not. I finally had to resort to my worst nightmare, which was throwing these things on a belt sander to level off the tops. Now, throwing it on a belt sander means I'm going to be sanding and polishing to get that smooth, glossy finish back. And that was no easy task. I didn't want to have to do this. I spent the next several weeks laboriously and painstakingly sanding these things by hand. Now, why did it take several weeks? Because it was boring and because I didn't want to do it. And so I skipped a whole bunch of days. I get a limited amount of time to myself to do things, which is typically when, you know, this channel happens. Do I really want to spend an hour and a half or two hours on like one resin coaster? No. So finally, I got the brilliant idea to involve a power tool. I just hot glued these things to a wasteboard and I was able to use a palm sander. I worked my way up through three grits up to 320 in short order. My hands were numb and pulsating, but then I had to go on to hand sanding again. I wet sanded these things all the way up to 600 grit by hand. It was boring. It was laborious. It was unfun. I regret everything. The end result of all that sanding looked bad. 
I don't know how else to say it, it didn't look good. I mean, it was still very dull and visibly scratched from the terrible job that I had just done sanding. At this point, I'm ready to pivot. You see, the whole point of sanding is to try and remove some material from that top surface so you can make it nice and smooth. Well, if you can't do that, what if you could add something to the top of that surface that would fill in the little cracks and crevices and those little scratches from sanding and give you a smooth, glossy finish that way? Something like a, a polish or a, a clear coat? Huh? Maybe? Huh? Maybe something like a high gloss varnish? Yeah, stuff is actually really, really, really cool and did not work well. It dried kind of splotchy and terrible. So I thought, you know what? How about some polyurethane? That would probably do the trick, right? And it went on incredibly. Looked awesome until it dried, splotchy, and kind of pulled away from the edges and looked bad. Bad, 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 <laughs> bad. I thought maybe I'll just use some Flitz polish and just give it a nice polishing. Did not work for me in the least. There's a phrase about polishing a turd, and I had turds on my hands. <laughs> I give up. There's no way that I'm going to find some miracle cure that I can just sprinkle on to make the hard work go away. Obviously, I'm going to have to sand and finish this thing the right way. But what is the right way? Like, how does Peter Brown do it? He gets amazing mirror-like glassy finishes on every single one of his resin projects. How does he do it? I mean, I know how he does it. Obviously, he uses micro mesh polishing pads and his fancy dancy lathe. But I don't have a lathe. I mean, I do have a drill. I have a drill. This worked way better than it had any right to. It's a simple little 3D printed piece here that printed in less than 30 minutes with a little bolt in there. Just something so I can throw this into my drill chuck and this plus some polishing pads that went from 320 grit all the way up to 3500 did just fine polishing these guys up. Very, very simple. Probably should have thought of this a lot earlier, but hey, at least I got there, right? Well, yeah, the doy took you long enough. This project took me forever, not because it was complex. In fact, it's the simplest and most straightforward project I've ever done for this channel. Now, this project took me forever because I made a bunch of bad decisions and dumb, dumb mistakes, one after another, after another, after another. But I didn't give up. I fought my way through, and I found my way to the one good decision I was going to make this whole way through, and just ran with it. And by the way, drill as lathe brilliant. I love it. And I have some spare drill motors that may or may not find their way into becoming a mini lathe in the near future. And if you like that kind of thing, you best subscribe because you know I'm going to make a video out of it when I do it. Look, there are lots of ways that you could use technology or materials to try and skip the hard work stages of a project. But there are some times when you just flat can't do that. And trying to get a smooth, glossy finish on resin you got to go the hard way. There's no easy way around it. That's what I've learned today. I hope you've learned something. And I hope you've learned how to click that subscribe button because I want you here for next time. Until then, bye. I almost dropped it. I almost dropped it. You're not getting away from me, you flitz polish. You little flitz. They weren't the size or stiffness that I wanted. This will probably contribute to some of my problems later. Let's get back in focus. Monster.